uh, showing the various display cabinets show artifacts that were dug up from the site from different periods so you know, you're very welcome to have a look and browse at those and some of the wall displays. Also down at the far end we've got uh, one of the pretty complete skeletons. I know you've probably seen some of the, the individual bones in the other cabin and out on site you've probably seen some of the skeletons in the ground but this is one that's been excavated and cleaned and, and we've analysed it so you know, if people want to come and have a look at the skeleton I can tell them a bit more about that otherwise they'll just have a look at the, uh, the displays and uh, So yeah, what we've got here is one, one of the skeleton, one of the many skeletons that, that we've excavated here, just sort of laid out for display. Um, well, we haven't got the, the entire thing laid out. We've, we've omitted like a lot of the ribs and some of the hands and feet, but uh, you can get a, a general idea. The um, one of the main things people want to know, of course, is how old was this person? And rather sadly, this was um, like a young teenager. Basically, they were about 12 to 16. Um, we could tell that from the, uh, the development of the teeth, particularly you know, they'd, they'd lost all their baby teeth, but uh, the, uh, the adult teeth are still developing slightly. And also, one, one particular aspect of growth is the way the bones form. Now, when children are, are, are born and as they develop, their, their bones are not all one piece as, as they become when they're an adult. They actually have a the ends are separate pieces called epiphyses and you know, so your bones, this is what your bones actually are like. Now there's nothing to worry about because that they're actually held on with cartilage and the bone is quite rigid and it doesn't stop you walking around and doing all, all those things that you normally do but they are actually two separate pieces and it's to do with the, uh, the way the bone actually grows, it makes it easier for the bone, bone to develop and as, the, uh, as you grow older these bits eventually fuse on and join and it all becomes one part. You get that at both ends of the, bo uh, of the bone, um, I have got the bottom one here, but you can see you get a, a very distinctive sort of knobbly surface on the, uh, on, the end of, on the end of the bone and this, re this really helps us to determine the age of, of young people because the, um, the age at which these join on varies depending on which part of the body we're talking about. So um, one of the first parts to join up is the pelvis, which when you're very young is in several pieces, but it joins up very quickly. And about the latest part, which doesn't fuse until you're in your early 20s, is the, uh, the clavicle, the collarbone up here. So depending on how, uh, how old you are, some of these will be fused and some will be unfused, and that helps to judge the age. Of course, you've also got the general size as well. This per and he's probably not quite the, reached the full height yet. I mean, nowadays, by the time somebody's 16 or something, they're getting probably pretty close to their uh, the full height, perhaps. In those days, people took longer to mature. Um, they would of often be still growing while they were in their early 20s, I guess because of the general uh, nutrition and uh, conditions they lived in. You know, they, they didn't have such a rich diet as we do now, it's quite restricted. But although they took longer to grow, they still grew to about the same sort of height. Um, by the time uh, that they'd fully grown, I mean, we've measured hundreds of, um, of adult skeletons here, and the average height for the men is 5 foot 8 inches. So I put, you're probably all working metric nowadays, but you know, the ar that's only about 1 or 2 inches lower than the, the average height. Of people today in 2009, so you know, the, very often people say, "Oh, they were much shorter back in medieval times," but that that is simply not true. You know, it's, in fact, you know, there's been thousands and thousands of medieval skeletons dug up all over the country, and that's a, a general result. So, yes, that they were slightly shorter, but nothing significant really, and uh, they just took longer to grow to that uh, to that height than we do nowadays. So yes, so it's about 12 to 16. Um, the other sort of main question you might want to know is, is it a boy or a girl? And that's really not po not possible to tell because at that age, uh, you know, it's just starting to get to the point where the differences between male and female skeletons develop. Obviously, when you look at 
even a, a young child who's alive, you can tell straight away whether they're male or female, but the, their skeletons are, almost, are pretty much identical, and that remains true up until they really reach sexual maturity. And you know, th this one, this, this, the, they simply aren't old enough; they haven't developed enough yet for those differences in in the skeleton to uh, to emerge. Obviously, one of the main areas where you do get differences in, is in the pelvis, and this is this is part of the pelvis, the hip bone here. Um, that's quite a different shape between adult males and adult females because females have to give birth, and that, that means they have to be the, the whole pelvis has to be a different shape. So that's very distinctive. If we have a complete pelvis of an adult, we can uh, tell with quite. Uh, high degree of accuracy whether it's a male or a female. The skull as well, uh, you get some differences between male and female. So males tend to be more robust, stronger jaws, big, bigger muscle attachments and so on. But the, the pelvis is really the key one. Um, how did this person die? We really, really have no idea. I mean, there's uh, most of the things that killed people in those days, diseases like measles, uh, food, things related to drinking uh, bad water and so on. You know, these killed people uh, very quickly in those days before it had any impact on the skeleton at all. The longer term conditions that people suffered from, due to bad diet and so on, like rickets and so on. Yes, we can see those in the skeleton, but they tend to take a long time to develop, and they're not usually the reason somebody died. So uh, it's it, it's nice on TV programs and so on. We say, oh well, yes, we can tell the person died this way. There's still the arrow stuck in their back or something like that. But uh, you know, we we're, we're not in a warlike environment here. This is just a village community, very much like the sort of people who live around here nowadays. Except, of course, most of these people were working on the land. They live locally. They didn't go very far away. So you know, there's, there's not really signs of violence, but you get signs of hard work. Not, not, not so much in the younger ones like this. The bones have no time to deteriorate, but just like nowadays, older people s suffer from joint problems. Their joints start to ache. The bones start to to wear, and that happened, of course, in these times, particularly because they're out working. The f most people are working out in the fields. It's very hard physical labour. Not much rest. So the, they, they tend to get a lot of wear at uh, at quite a young age and uh, particularly well the teeth as well you, you get it dreadful wear on people's teeth and you know, it must have been very painful because obviously they didn't have dentistry in those days um, this one's got lovely teeth because as I say it's, it's uh, a sort of teenager they've just got their adult teeth and haven't had time to wear yet but people um, in the last group I, I, I was told off for saying it wasn't anything to do with sugar you know, the, parent wanted me to say it was because they ate too many sweets <laughs> and that, that's what ruined their teeth but of course that's not true because they didn't really have sug sugar wasn't in the sense that we have it nowadays they didn't have cane sugar or, or beet sugar which is what most of our sugar came from they would have had a bit of honey but you know in terms of sweetness their diet was very sugar free one of the big problems was the um, a, a lot of the food they ate was bread a sort of cheap staple and diet. The, the wheat was ground up in mills where I mean, you've probably seen the old fashioned mills with these big stones going round and round grinding the corn. Particularly the sort of stones they used in those days, the, um, the stones that little bits of stone would get ground off as well as lo along with the grain and so your bread has got loads lots of tiny bits of grit in it and over time that just grinds your teeth away when you eat it so it gets people get really bad teeth the teeth get worn away they get big abscesses and cavities it's uh, it, it, it's terrible it must have been an, an awful part of life in those days um, yeah apart from that then there's not an awful lot of uh, interesting pathology that you really see on, on the these skeletons just come, yeah just coming back again to the to the age of this one that this um, chart here uh, the, it's just it's a bit old now, but the um, shows a breakdown of the, the the different skeletons that we've excavated here. But the yellow section, which you can see, is getting on for half of it, is the, is the children, people below 16. 
so you know a huge proportion of the skeletons that we excavated were were children who, you know it was child mortality was was a real terrible fact of life in those days okay well that's that's it if you've got any questions about the skeleton or, or anything else in here you know, please free feel free to ask or if you want to come and have a closer look at the skeleton yeah.